All right, folks. Microphone check. One, two. What is this? I guess we're live. We've got a, we've got somebody watching. All right, awesome. So here we go. Um, we are live once again. Those of you who were with us, uh, I guess it was Thursday night. We did an impromptu live session, but today we've officially announced it, and uh, we're getting going here. So we're going to let some people join in. But please, the whole point is for you, that one person who's watching now. To uh, send some comments and stuff, and uh, and we'll we'll talk right back to you. So, yeah. So, what should we? I, I'm. Did we decide about the updating? Are we gonna have a current live update, or are we gonna it's have it? To yeah. I wonder what we want to do with that. We want to have it keep updating live or not? Uh, can you pull it up on the iPad? Yeah. Let's see what we can do here. So anyway, hopefully you can, more folks can, can start to join us here. I want to thank you early birds for getting in on this. How was your day? I hope you had a good day. I had a good day. I definitely did. All right. Well, we've got 29 folks here now, so that's good. We're getting started. Um... Like I said, this is only the second time we're doing this, so we're working out the kinks. Uh, if there's anything you want to let me know, please do so. And uh, we're going to try to answer as many questions as we can. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. I don't see any in here right yet, so we're going to... I may have to change my settings on the comments. All right, all right, I have comments. No. I know I'm not the tech person. <laughs> I'm the chatty one. So I'm not seeing any questions yet from, from new questions. So I'll have to have uh, Wade figure this out. He'll come down and figure this out in a second. Um, let's see. What happens when I do that? No. Oh, okay. Here we go. All right. Okay. Here we go. So how much... Um, how much Easier or difficult, more difficult was the prep process this time compared to the last time. Oh, minus mentor. Easier. Um, last time we didn't prepare at all. <laughs> so actually, I guess last time was easier. Uh, no, there really isn't too much to do. Uh, like I was just kind of saying, Wade's the technical genius. So he figured out all the linking and blah, 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 all that stuff. I just kind of had to slap on a little lipstick and show up. So it really wasn't too difficult. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am going to put the update. Hi, everybody. So, okay, if, if these come in, I'm going to be scrolling around and stuff like this. Um, oh, I just saw somebody say, who do I think won, Nick or Carlos? I actually had that fight three to two, Nick. But I knew it was very, 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 very close. The whole time I was watching the fight, I was with Zeus for Middle Easy. Both of us were sitting there in every round. And listen, I'm a huge Nick Diaz fan, for sure. But every round... Um, I was sitting there with Zeus, and he, and he would look at me, and, he, and he's like, who do you think? And I go, jeez, I don't know, Zeus, that was kind of close. I don't know. And he's like, no, no, that was Nick. That was Nick. So if you ask Zeus, it was five to nothing Diaz. But I had it three to two, um, taking nothing away from Carlos, who I think is a, is a talented fighter. But, but I saw three to two for Nick, and, uh, and hoping that um, his retirement isn't a real and permanent thing because he's too good. He's too good for us not to have on the scene. So, um, <laughs> how epic is Silva Sonnen going to be this summer? Uh, it's going to be ridiculous. You know, the, the thing that's so great about that fight is it's, you know, two years in the making. By the time it gets to it, I, I mean, I just hope it's not like we don't all uh, go through kind of an adrenaline dump for that fight. I mean, what happens if, because I was there for, for Anderson and, and Vitor, what happens if... After all this hype, after all this everything, it comes out and it's one of those 30 seconds, bam, done. Um, or vice versa, that, you know, Chael lands something and knocks him out. I mean, how insane will that be? It's, at this point, it better be a five-round war. Or I feel like we're going to be disappointed. At least, I want at least two good rounds out of that. But, um, but that is absolutely going to be epic. And fingers crossed that we'll go to Brazil for that one because uh, I think it would just be tremendous. Can't wait. Can't wait for that. Um, yes, I was going to mention the name, but now I'm... Okay, Pennywise247, what do I think about the UFC going to Alberta? 
I could not be more happy. Why? Because some of our best friends moved to Calgary. They moved back to Canada last July, and we miss them desperately. They were here the other day. We've already talked about it. We're going to probably go early and catch a little bit of stampede. Can't be more fired up to go to Calgary. I'm totally, totally psyched. Um, okay, now, you know, the one thing this is is that the scrolling doesn't work as well when you... I, I did the pop-out. Maybe I should go back to the other thing. Because, see, this was the old stuff. I'm having a little technical issue here, folks. And then I, I know, but you, it doesn't really work. It's the old comments. And so then I popped it out and it's all the new ones. But I'm wondering, there's no like scroll bar. Do you see what I'm saying? All right, folks, we're going to do the best we can. Um, the scrolling thing, I guess maybe we do this. It's just difficult to see all these comments because it's not letting me scroll. So we're going to figure this out. Maybe I'll access it. Through the, I'm gonna turn uh, the live updates back on. All right. Well. I mean, I'll go with this. Okay. Right, but those are still all the old ones. Those are all the things that came in before we went live. There's no new ones there. Right? Mm -hmm. so refresh. Okay, we're refreshing. That might work. Okay. All right, that's cool. That works. See, that's like I said. He's the tech. I just talk. Because I do a lot more than that, but. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Am I Team Faber or Team Cruz? Let me think, let me think. D-nuts. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I like them both. I know that's not fair to say. I, you know, I actually really kind of like how, uh, how, how Dominic is, is manipulating things. I think he's doing a good job at the head game. And he's winning fights. Um, that being said, I, I, I know, well, geez, I don't even, I was going to say, I know more of the guys on favor team, but I don't. In fact, I may be talking to Wilson Hayes later this week, who is the jiu-jitsu coach on Dominic's team. Um, great Brazilian guy, you know, Brazilian black belt, trains trains with uh, with him down at Alliance in San Diego, but he's also from Philly. So we're actually probably going to be talking to Wilson later. I, I don't know. I like both guys. I like what Dominic is doing though with the head game. I think it's kind of interesting, but I, I haven't picked a picked a winner on that season though yet. So, um, okay, let's see, let's see. You're a huge celeb in my eyes. Can I please just have a shout out, Jagan Master? What's up? Okay, who am I taking in the final four? You know what? I love basketball, but I have to say, uh, I went to Brown, and my team never, you know, got in any of the basketball tournaments and stuff. So I don't follow college ball as much. Um, I honestly don't even remember how Syracuse did the other day. I was watching a little bit of that game, but uh, I'm not sure who won. I I should have a pick for the Final Four. I'm going to get back to you on that one because I don't I don't know. Um, ooh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Gustafson versus Silva. Well, on that one, I have to say uh, Burning Burning Warner, Burning Lur. You know, I don't know what you want with those names. Uh, we will be in Sweden, which is going to be fantastic. So I will see that fight firsthand and, and hopefully talk to, uh, well, not hopefully, I know I'll talk to the winners and stuff after the fight. Um, it's going to be hard, obviously, when somebody is in, in home ter territory. I think Gustafsson obviously has a big advantage there. Silva could have a lot of ring rust. It's been a year since he's fought. So... You know, I don't know. Gustafsson has been looking really, really good. He dispatched our friend Vladimir Matushenko very quickly. Um, I think the kid is on the rise. I have a feeling that that home crowd is going to be something to contend with. So I might have to go Gustafsson, but not without him getting punched hard a few times. Because <laughs> Silva's no joke, so uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. That's going to be great. We want the new ones just quick. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So we are scrolling down. Da, 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 da. Okay, make these shows earlier, SVT Films. We're working this out. We are going to be doing this every Monday. We're actually toying with the idea of doing one sort of midday Pacific time and then one in the evening so that we can uh, talk to everybody around the world. So this is only the second one we've done. Right now it's at 8.30. Definitely, if you guys have ideas on times you would like, let us know, and we'll try to work it out. Um, you know, it's earlier can be a little tricky. We want to make sure people are sort of in a position where they're at home, where they can chill, or, uh, you know, just kind of be able to tune in watch the show. But we're taking all of your comments into consideration. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, 
Well, I missed a lot of these down here, though, so I didn't even... Uh, how do I feel about the Ultimate Fighter in a live format? Oh, is that Jagan Master again? Uh, you know, I, I, I like it. The first show, I have to say, I thought was a, a little rough. Um, I thought it... I, it would have been improved if they had, you know, John um, kind of more mic'd up to call the fights. It was kind of weird. They just sort of mic'd the room, and it was just a little bit of the atmosphere. I felt like we needed to hear Dana and Dominic and Uriah a little bit more. But since that first show, uh, I think it's definitely been been improving, and I like it. I, I do like it. I have to say, you know, they've made it appointment television, which is kind of a cool idea. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying the show. I think the season is fun. I, I am enjoying it. Um, should foreign fighters be concerned for their safety in Brazil? Keldrick 66. I, I think, listen, from our Brazilian friends, they've all said anybody who goes there needs, you know, play heads up ball when they're down there. I don't necessarily think foreign fighters have anything to worry about. I feel like the Brazilian people have such a great competitive spirit and love the sport that I don't feel like they would hurt the fighters or anything like that or, or riot against the fighters. I don't, I I don't get that from them. I don't get that vibe. That being said, everything I've ever heard about going to Brazil is, you know, you have to have your wits about you and know what you're doing. But I don't think a fighter is, is in any more of a precarious position, necessarily. I mean, save for Chael, <laughs> who, you know, has, has baited, the, baited the people so much that, uh, that he might get a little bit of a butt kick if you give him the opportunity. But, but I, don't, I don't feel like anybody else would be in danger in Brazil, and, and really not even Chael. Like I said, they, they know it's a, it's, a, it's a sport, and it's all part of the game. So that's how I feel. Um, what can I do? Well, I did those. All right, there's 38 minutes. Okay, but I still didn't get to uh, see a lot of these beginning ones. They, they kind of scrolled right by without me even seeing them. So, um, do, 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 do. let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, am I going to be watching Super Fight League in India? I don't know. Is that this weekend? If it is this weekend, I can't because I'm actually working this weekend on the WMMA show. Um, down in El Paso, Texas, if anybody's there. It's a, the debut show for the WMMA, the Worldwide M and Mixed Martial Arts, and, you know, they're doing something great, giving a portion of the proceeds to charity. In this case, it's Wounded Warriors. So we're going to be down uh, and on the base uh, in Texas. It's, it should be a lot of fun. Um, Sean McCorkle is the main event. It's also got Carol Parisian on the card and Thomas Denny and um, a lot of names that people know, Lyle Beer Bombs on it and stuff. So that's going to be fun. I'm working that this Saturday night. That is a pay-per-view. You guys can look at it, into it. and uh, Go to WorldWideMMA.com or look for them, WMMA on Twitter. And uh, it's going to be fun. Got to be honest, I don't love El Paso. Sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. I've been there before for some fights. It's okay. But, um, but Texas people do like their fights, so that's always fun. So it's really live. It is really live. Really I, it, yes, official Gundan. It really is live. I don't know how I can prove it more than just responding to your, your, your message. Um, that, do I work out? Soprano 1972. Mm, take us to the gun show. <laughs> of course I work out. I think it would kind of be, um, sort of pathetic to cover a fighting sport and cover something very athletic without at least pursuing it to some degree myself. So uh, I do train on Tuesday mornings with Chad George over at PKG Boxing. Uh, I, you know, it's PKG Training Center, but I box with him on Tuesday mornings. I'm tempted to get into a little bit of Muay Thai. I used to do Taekwondo and, you know, obviously I go running and I, I go to the gym a lot, but uh, I just don't want anybody hitting me back is the thing. So when I get that sport that's ideal where somebody lets me open up a can of whoop ass on them, Without them hitting me back, you can sign me up. <laughs> okay, okay. I think it's good to access all of them. Okay. So, um, let's see. JD is an Overeem. I talked about this the other day. That's a close fight. I think that one could go either way. I think um, JDS is so fast, but Overeem is so strong. That one to me is a pick a fight, and I don't I don't usually pick them because sometimes your heart thinks one thing, your head thinks another thing. This is going to be great. All I know is I want ringside seats. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What's um, up, Kentucky? <laughs> Kentucky out brown. Yeah, Ralph. All right. Let's see. Let's see some new comments. Let's see. Which are louder and better fans, Canadians or Brazilians? Well, seeing as I haven't been to a show in Brazil yet and I have been in Canada, I don't, you know, Canada I didn't think was overly loud, although it was the biggest show was UFC 129 and there were 55,000 people there. Although I didn't feel like it was overly loud. I mean, I guess Brazilians might be louder. I think, in general, Brazilians are more party people than Canadians. No offense to Canadians. I've 
a lot of Canadian fans, uh, friends and fans. But I think Brazilians are kind of more active, loud, vocal party people. But until I go to a fight in Brazil, I won't be able to judge that completely. But uh, I'm blowing your mind, K2O Juice. <laughs> Does Anderson Silva retire undefeated in the UFC? Till it. Yeah, he hasn't lost in forever, huh? The last time he actually met the guy, a Luis Azaredo, I think it was, that, uh, that, that beat Anderson years and years ago. It's totally possible. Anderson is, Anderson is, Anderson is the man. You know, uh, I think Anderson, Anderson can beat whoever he wants to beat. Put it that way. I think the guy's unbelievable. BJ Penn, does he come back? Fingers crossed. I feel like BJ maybe just needs to shake up the training or uh, update, you know, something in the regimen. Maybe he got too comfortable. Maybe he's got too many people around him that aren't pushing him enough. That's not to say that his coaches aren't, because I know some of his coaches, and I know that they're that they're demanding. But um, you know, maybe he's just burnt out a little bit. Maybe it's just been too long. But I I hope BJ doesn't stop. He's too good to stop. And I think you know if he can find a way to get happy about it again. I didn't feel like, I mean, you know, the Nick Diaz fight was tough because those two like each other, formerly trained together, they didn't really feel fired up about fighting each other. I know Nick kind of had a hard time with it. So I'd like to see, I'd like to see BJ in a fight where he was just fully amped, no question about it, fired up to fight. Um, I think that would be good for him and for all of us. Um, and till it's finished your, your threesome, does, does Nick Diaz come back? My goodness, I hope so. He's just too good. He's just too good. <laughs> Base Styles 925, would I fight Ronda Rousey? Not on your life. Uh, I would fight her. I would fight her for like a beer. Uh, I'd fight her to pay the bill for it or something. I would not fight that woman. She is tough. Very cool, though. I like her a lot. Uh, so, no, no, I would not fight Ronda Rousey. I wouldn't fight Misha. I wouldn't fight Sarah. I wouldn't fight Marluz. No, those girls, are, those girls would kick my butt. What's my favorite type of music? Seymour Green, 11. Tell me you like Prince. I love Prince. Prince is fantastic. Um, I remember going to Prince's Club years and years ago, and, and, and he was, you know, he's so cool. Um, I, you know, I you know I, I, I know how people always say that. I like everything, but I do like a lot of everything. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge country fan. Um, the right country song I like, and I kind of like more like Johnny Cash country and stuff like that. I like country-infused rock and roll of kind of rootsy rock. But, um, you know, I mean, I was kind of raised on alternative rock, so I mean, one time I took a vacation and followed Jane's Addiction around for a week. You know, I've seen Chili Peppers a million times. I love Afghan wigs and, uh, you know, some of the sort of 90s, uh, 90s bands. But lately, I'm really, really into the Black Keys. I like them a lot. Um... There is, uh, I'm trying to think what else I've been listening to. Goa Pele, she, I think I'm pronouncing it right. She has a song called Play that is just unbelievable. Um, big into like Jurassic 5. I, I love uh, NERD and i big into Rage Against the Machine. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of more of a rock chick. Um, but of course, I always love my Bob Marley and stuff like that. But I, I'm not a, um, I'm, I'm not into like, I listen to my top 40 only when I'm running. Like, I have to admit, Kesha is like a guilty pleasure. Um, it's, it's just so bad, but it's fun. It's fun for, it's fun for, uh, for running and stuff like that. So what, what was, oh yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> um, what's my favorite comedy movie of all time? Calm chick. It's tough. It's, it's a toss up. The jerk is, is pretty much my all time favorite comedy movie. Is Steve Martin movie for people who haven't seen it. It's so it's so unbelievably stupid. It's that stupid genius comedy that I love so much. I know every single line. Like you can't watch that movie with me because it's just I'm just annoying. Um, I also love Diner, which is kind of a uh, it's a comedy drama, but um, it's it's got you know like uh, uh, Mickey Rourke way back when Steve Gutenberg. It's got uh, which is which is totally funny. Tim Daly. Um, Kevin Bacon. It's set in the '60s, and it's um, it all takes place over just a couple of days. Has so many great lines. Again, it's one of those movies that I quote. But in in a completely goofball mood, you can't beat Dumb and Dumber. 
uh, you know, when the bird's head pops out, oh, you know, he was old. Um, that movie's great. That's one of Jake Ellenberger's favorite movies as well. I also really like Superbad. And um, what else? Did, what did we see recently that was that was great? Um, the one with well, I love I love Will Ferrell. So um, <laughs> we're, we're streaking in the quad. You know that's that's classic. Will Ferrell is awesome. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, who, who do I think takes the middleweight strap this summer? My gosh. You know, I think Anderson is hard to beat. That being said, I think, you know, I've seen Mark Munoz train. I know how much heart he has. He's so dedicated and only getting better and better. And that guy is so tough. So I could totally see him being a champ someday. I know he's, he, he kind of laughs, uh, laughs off Bisping and saying that Bisping can't beat him. You know, that's going to be a great fight. I, I think there's there. I don't think anybody's going anywhere until Anderson decides that he's done. But um, but I think that Mark is terrific, and I think he's he's doing some good work. Not to say that Chell couldn't pull it off. You know, don't ask me for predictions. I'm not the prediction girl because it can all go wrong. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Have I had an interview with Chell's son and held heck tech? Tica, heck, technica. Yes, I have. You can look on my channel. There's an interview with Chael there. And I will be seeing him, I, I believe, in the next few weeks uh, out in Sweden. And uh, so perhaps I'll be able to get another one with him. Chael is, is very cool. You know, he's a piece of work. Somebody, again, Wade needs to see you to see if you look like Chael. So here's our mandatory Wade visual. Man, I do not look like Chael. But... You look All like right. him a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Um, and so the whole joke for people who missed it before is that Leoto's camp likes to call Wade Chell. At some point we have to put that picture up of the two of you because you, together they do kind of, kind of look like it, each other. They, they're, they're brothers from another mother, we like to say. <laughs> Demand 4226. Who's going to win between John and Rashad? Do I think John is unbeatable? No. Nobody is unbeatable. I know I probably just said that about Anderson Silva, so now I'm going to flip up. But, ah, listen, Rashawn has, anybody has a chance. If Rampage had landed a solid punch on the chin, that could have been lights out. Um, I think that Rashad has a lot of tools in the arsenal, and I think that mental game is really going to come into play. And who, you know, Rashad has a lot more experience than John. Um, that being said, John is obviously a very smart, grounded, stable fighter. It's going to be really interesting. I don't think John is unbeatable. I don't think anybody's unbeatable. Um, but I do think that's going to be a great fight. We will be there for that fight. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, yeah. John, you know, anybody can be beat. And I mentioned this in the last talk. But the more John fights, the more footage you have on him, the more you can start to figure him out. I think when he first came out, guns a blazing, he just took everybody by storm, and he was such an enigma. But now, I think you can start to figure him out. That being said, he just keeps getting better. So, I don't know. I think he could be champ for a very long time, certainly, but I don't think he's unbeatable. No, I don't think he's unbeatable. There's a point asking a question. Hmm? No point asking a question. You won't see it. Dalitabra17. Yes, I will. Too shady you. So, do I think Gilbert Melendez is being overlooked? Personally, I think he would destroy destroy Edgar Hens Anderson. It's a joke. He's in strikers. I'm really upset by it. Rocky Diesel Gypsy. It's funny. We actually had this conversation about uh, Gilbert Melendez the other day. Do I think he's being overlooked? No. I think Gilbert is being used to solidify the strike force fighters to... I don't want to say legitimize because that sounds bad for the other fighters. That's not what I mean. But Gilbert is a real threat. I think by having him as your champ at Strike Force, you're defining yourself as a league with a very difficult man to beat. Therefore, we're all legit here. We're all real fighters scrapping to beat a guy that is definitely on the top five in the world there, I think. I think Gilbert is tremendous. I also think that Gilbert, while would probably love be, being in the UFC. I think Gilbert knows that he could have a future over at Strike Force and at Showtime. If you haven't noticed, Gilbert's been getting behind the mic a little bit. You know, guys need to think about transitioning in their life after fighting. And I think Gilbert has a nice home over there. 
Would he like to fight in the UFC? I'm sure he probably would, and would he like to test himself against these guys for sure? But I don't know if he's all that mad about being the top dog over there. Uh, I, I, I don't think he's that mad. I don't think he's being overlooked because everybody always says, what about Gilbert, what about Gilbert? So he's not being overlooked. He's maybe just not getting the matchups that some people want to see, but I definitely don't think he's being overlooked. Uh, the Luke boy won. Have I been to Australia? No. Would I like to? Yes. I would. I would love to go to Australia. Um, haven't been. Got some great Australian friends. Justin Fortune. We shoot our uh, our show a lot up at Fortune Gym. Justin is, was a heavyweight contender in boxing. Fought Lennox Lewis at one point. He's Australian. Total piece of work. And is very funny. Uh, also, we have an interview with Michael Katsidis that we'll be releasing. He's fighting on April 13th. And um, I know for all you MMA guys... That's a boxer, so maybe you're not going to be that excited about it. But Michael's a pretty cool guy, and he's going to be scrapping in a few weeks. And he's an Aussie, so um, we're definitely servicing you guys, and hopefully you will look for that. It's going to be pretty cool. So um, let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> Chael's a dead man walking, an Astrodomus. You could be right. I mean, the guy certainly has a target, you know. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Old school. Yes, old school with the streak into the quad. Thank you, 709 Nufi. Rampage or Shogun? Don't ask. That fight is going to, you know, <sighs> bad enough I had to sit through Shogun Hendo. Two fighters that I absolutely love. Now we got to do Shogun Rampage. I mean, I can't, I'm begging for a draw. I know that sounds off. <laughs> I'm begging for a war where the judges just go, I can't take it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, certainly, look, if you look at the old fight, it's Shogun all day, but, uh, you know, Rampage, we were talking to us the other day and talking about, you know, he wasn't 100%, but he likes to fight and not let his fans down, so he went and did it, but uh, don't ask. They're asking where you get the questions from? Where do I get the questions? They're if they're on your streaming. channel, okay. click through to go to the video. If you're on my channel, click the video, so you'll see it in the homepage thing, so Wade's saying click the video. It'll bring you to the other page, and then that way you'll start to be able to see the comments, right? And then that they can start yeah, to type off, in. Off your homepage channel. They won't. Yeah, you won't see the videos off the, 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 the questions off the homepage. You have to click, actually click on the video to see it uh, again. So, Oh, it's Dat Libra 17. It's your zodiac sign. Oh, you're a Libra. Fair and balanced. I'm by myself. I'm a Capricorn. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see, let's see, let's see. Why don't I go to Strike Force shows? Uh, been to millions. Just can't go to every single one. Done a lot of them. I was there when, when Fabricio beat Fedor. I've been to a million Strike Force shows. Yeah, see, see, don't, don't start with that stuff. This is just silly. I just couldn't go to Ohio, but we go to Strike Force shows when we can. So definitely not abandoning them. I mean, we've done a lot with them. That's why, that's why I have a rapport with Nick Diaz. That's why I have a rapport with Jake Shields. A lot of these guys. I've covered their fights for quite some time. So. Gilbert. And Gilbert, of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> who wins in a street fight? Medea or Mrs. Doubtfire? Sammy loves 69. I gotta go with Medea. If she can bring her gun. If she can't bring her gun, I gotta say Mrs. Doubtfire could be a little scrappy because Robin Williams has that scrappy body. Um, that's very funny. But Medea, you know, she's not. She can do bad all by herself and stuff like that. So... AZ-1003, of course I don't mind taking pictures of fans. I like it. As long as you don't show up with a shirt that says almost stupid and stand next to me, I'm good. <laughs> um, yes, why two J codes? Do I really think Rashad Evans is main event material? Yes. Uh, the guy has only lost one fight. Um, I don't know, so I'm guessing that makes him main event material. The guy is very, very good, very talented fighter. And the thing about Rashad is he makes you want to see him, love him or hate him. Like, if you don't like Rashad, you want to show up and see him, see if he can get his ass beat. And if you do like Rashad, you know that he's training hard. The guy's got a great sense of humor. He puts it all in, in, in there, and, and I think he's absolutely main event material. Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What movies am I most anticipating this year? Nick, 191088. Gosh, what am I looking forward to? You know, I don't get out to the movies much. I still need to see, uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And I need to see, uh, I hear Star Wars is good. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars. 
one of my all-time favorites. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, let's see. What was what was my first job? That Libra, you're asking me. You know, probably working in a mall way back when, just like every girl. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Rav Baller, here's your shout out. What's up? Um, my goodness, Wild Soul 471. What was the first MMA fight I saw? Or the first UFC fight? I think the first MMA fight was probably one of the Pro Elite shows. You know, I used to work for Showtime Championship Boxing and Pro Elite and stuff was starting at the same time. So um, I don't think it was something up in Santa Inez or something like that, but it, it, it may have been one of the Pro Elite shows. Um, so it, it, that was fun. I mean, that was certainly fun, and I've seen a lot of UFC shows now. One of the first one we started covering... Um, credential wise was 121 down in Anaheim so that was um, when Cain Velasquez won his belt and that was that was just incredible I mean the, the audience the crowd was so pro Cain it was a great place for him to win and it, it was that was just a big show I remember you know the weigh-ins were insane and just the show was insane and I remember the energy of the building you're thinking all right this is the real deal there's nothing like a title fight it's it's good stuff so um Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I know I'm contradicting myself a lot, but that's only because the sport leads people to go, I don't know if this guy could win, maybe that guy could win, I don't know. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Who's my favorite female fighter? Um, let's see, Luke Boy. I mean, Rhonda's awesome, don't get me wrong. Rhonda is awesome, and I can't wait to watch her. But, I, you know, I like I like Marlou's, too. But I loved Gina. Gina was awesome. You know, Gina Gina was fun because she, she had that great balance of being really shy in person and being a butt kicker in the cage. So I like her a lot. But, I mean, uh, I love how Rhonda just goes all out. I mean, that girl is, that girl is fierce. I like her. Um, let's see, let's see. Um... Let's see. My favorite event ever, S. White 6. My favorite event ever. Not because of where it was, but what the fights were. I loved the 139 in San Jose. Like I was just saying, Shogun and Hendo was ridiculous, but that was also Nate Diaz and Donald Cerrone, which was unbelievable. That fight was unbelievable. Um, you know, 129 was fun up in Toronto just because it was so huge. It was kind of fun to be part of that whole thing. Um, but I don't know. Pound for pound, 139 might be it. You know, it's funny, too, because you remember the stuff that's more recent. So I'll, I'll end this thing later on, and then I'll go, oh, I totally loved something else, and I just can't remember it right now. So what do you tell us the bloody elbows? Oh, give me a shout-out. My name is EJ. Okay. What? What's EJ? Yeah, we've answered a lot of EJ's questions. Okay, uh, yeah. Oshikawa Jesus. Hi, Karen. Did you see the first episode of Tough Brazil debut? What do you think like that? Okay, dude. That episode was slamming. Now, granted, I I, I actually, actually have to go back and catch the end because I did kind of fade a little bit near the end. And I was just talking to Stitch Duran today. I saw him over on the Fox lot. And I was talking to Stitch and we were, he was saying the last fight was just unbelievable because the guy just didn't have a good mouth guard and it kept getting punched out and everybody was kind of beat by the end of that, by the time that fight was coming. And then they just rallied everybody and it was incredible. But I will say this, I watched a lot of the fights. I know some of the guys on there. I know some of the ones that have won, like Cesar Mutanchi. You can see one of our, our interviews with Cesar. He's, um, he's Vitor's protege. But also, uh, I know uh, Tuba, who didn't win his fight. But um, I thought the show was terrific. A couple of things. A, the fighters themselves are so aggressive. I mean, they just came out just guns a-blazing. So I really appreciated the, the effort and the, and the attack from those guys. The aggressiveness was amazing. But I also just thought, you know, even just when the show started, how cool is this? Like, we're franchising this out. It's taking place in other countries now. I thought it looked terrific. I think Vitor and Vanderlei are, are great choices because Vanderlei is so funny. And, of course, everybody's talking about the joke about his his, uh, his cup and everything. I mean, the guy is so 
is so um, endearing and engaging. I don't know how you can't like Vanderlei. And I think that Vitor is great. It's nice to hear Vitor. His English is obviously very, very good, but I think it's nice to see Vitor in his natural element. He's more relaxed. I feel like he's more himself. I, I, I'm a fan, for sure, of that show. I think it's going to be terrific. And, and again, I just think these guys are out there scrapping, giving it all. Totally applaud their aggressiveness and, and, and their fighting. It, it's... Oh, I can't wait. I think it's going to be a great, a great season. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Have you mentioned the nurses? Have I mentioned? Oh, look at me. Somebody's correcting me. It was Vander. Oh, you're right. One thirty nine was Vanderlei and Kung. That was the other fight on there. That was Shogun and Hendo. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because Nate, 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 and Cerrone was in Vegas, wasn't it? I can't remember. We do a lot of these, but that's what it was. It was Vanderlei and Kung. That was just insane. Because it was in San Jose and everybody was freaking out that Kung lost there. Vanderlei was fine. Well, Vanderlei, yeah, Vanderlei was great. Nose. If you look at our post-fight interview, he says he, he, did, he did Kung a favor for his movie career by giving him a better nose. I apologize. You know, they blend together. I see. Here, maybe I'm building my ideal fight card. That <laughs> would add Shogun Endo in there. Would have had Nate and Cerrone on there. Vanderlei and Kung can be on that card too. That uh, that was great. Who would? Oh my goodness, fantasy matchup. Don't don't. Two fighters from any organization, any weight class, any era, any era. <sighs> I mean, could you see? Could you in his heyday? What if you put Shogun in his heyday against against Anderson? Would be, I mean, kind of like in Pride rules with head kicks. <laughs> That'd be pretty fierce. Um, how did I get a good report with Rampage Cat Track O three six one four? It didn't start. Uh, that well, I had to earn it for sure. I interviewed him first uh, at HB Ultimate. He, um, Rob, Rob, uh, uh, Razor Rob was doing an opening, and Rampage said, "Okay, I got two minutes." So I, you know, asked him for two minutes, and I asked him, you know, everything was going well, and then I asked him a question that he didn't like about about a MMA math, and he just kind of walked out. So I had to earn his trust back over the course of seeing him uh, at some events out at the Proving Grounds with Fight Academy out in Pasadena and just different stuff. And so we ended up, you know, chatting and getting back together and, and working it out. And then the fight when he was uh, facing Matt Hamill, we kind of worked out some of our issues and then it became all good. So um, it didn't, it didn't, if you look up the interview with me and, and Rampage, the first one, um, it didn't go so well. Yeah, Diaz and Cerrone was 141. Yeah, based up. We've, we've worked it. I said forgive me. Let's see. If I could have a superpower, what would it be? Hectectica. Either mind reading, flying, or being invisible. I don't know why. I think it would be amazing. Or like flying flying or like, you know, hyperspacing. Being being able to, to go teleporting. wherever yeah, teleporting. <laughs> like the hyperspace button when I'm playing Tempest. Asteroids. Some asteroids, exactly, <laughs> whatever. Um, um, mind reading would be amazing, though. I mean, certainly you can pick up cues, but like, it would be amazing if you're doing an interview and somebody's like, please don't ask me about something, please don't ask me about something, and then you're just like, boom, ask him about that, and just to put him in the hot seat. That would be a lot of fun. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where does Dan Hardy stand in the division Wapachu? You know, Dan Hardy doesn't stand that well right now, but, you know, Dan has been really candid about having a lot going on mentally and not being in the right place. I think Dan Hardy is such a great a great guy, a, a, a fun guy to see in the cage, a fun guy to rally around. I know he's been taking a lot of time in this last year really working on his game and working on getting his head right. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see when he comes back. We all know that he certainly goes to war. So I think he'll probably, you know, he can fight. He can fight. He just, he just hasn't been in the right headspace, I guess, to really finish it and get it all done. So where he stands, I guess, is kind of up to him if when he comes back, how, how hardcore he is and how dedicated he is. But by all accounts, he's working hard to, to, to earn everything back, and I really hope he does. I, I like him a lot. Did I mention the new shows? Wade is asking. We're going to pretend there's a comment. Hey, what about the new shows? That's coming in from Wade at MMA. Here's the deal. If you guys didn't notice today, we put out the premiere episode of MMA Heat um, that had aired on MAV TV. 
by popular demand, we're putting these out online. A lot of people couldn't see Mad TV, even though it's in 47 million homes across the country. A lot of people couldn't see it, you know, obviously around the world. So we've decided that we're going to release a new episode every Monday, not specifically at a certain time, but but you can look for them. If it comes down to that, we'll let you know. But but basically, Monday afternoons, we'll put out a new a, a new episode. You know, an an, an episode of M May Heat. We have 23 of them, so we got it. What? From season two. From season two, yes. We have 23 of them, so we will be putting them out. And the one that is available today has got Randy Couture. We went to Randy's house, and, and you guys are asking me what I like to watch. We ask Randy about what's on his DVR and, and stuff like that, so it, it's kind of fun. Um, we also went to Mark Munoz's after party from his fight um, in August that time. Uh, it, he didn't win his fight. That was, uh, he got, that was... It wasn't Aaron Simpson. No, because he beat Aaron Simpson. Okay. It was, it was in San Diego. We catch up with Uriah there. We catch up with Scott Smith, who's who's really funny. And then we also uh, go to war with Misha Tate. So that's something that you can look for. And by all accounts, you should share it with your friends. And if you subscribe to my channel, then you'll never miss any of these things anyway. So you should subscribe to that. So, um, yes, and MMA Heat, because we have two channels. Because sometimes the stuff is going to go up on the MMA Heat channel, like press conferences and weigh-ins and stuff like that. And other times, it's things are going to go to Karen Bryant, and that's when it's interviews and things with me. So just be safe. Subscribe to both of them. Play heads up ball. Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> Am I going to watch WrestleMania Rock versus Senna this Sunday? Decca Eminem. <laughs> You know, I don't watch a lot of WrestleMania, so maybe not. And it depends on my travel. I'm, I like I was saying, I'm working the WMMA show on uh, Saturday night in Texas, so I may still be traveling on Sunday night. But um, you know, I never was a huge, you know, wrestling fan. I did years ago go to go to a show live, but um, it's not really my thing. It's not really my thing. It's fun. I mean. I know, you know, Josh Barnett likes to do it over in, in Japan and Korea and stuff, and, you know, Bob Sapp and stuff like that. I, I know that can be fun, but um, it's not necessarily my, my favorite thing. Let's see. The most exciting ending was when Tito won the Bader fight, hands down, and Astrodomus. That was pretty amazing. And I will say this, in the media room, where all us journos are hanging out often behind the scenes, it's UFC policy. We're not supposed to root for people, and we you know, we generally don't. We, we maintain a certain amount of decorum because it's just not. This is not appropriate. But when when Tito won, the place went nuts. He needed it so badly, and it was so emotional. I don't know how you couldn't get caught up in that win. We were all pretty psyched for Tito. Uh, not, not taking anything away from Ryan, because Ryan's obviously doing well for himself now in the comeback. But uh, but that was pretty unbelievable and pretty spectacular. And I, you know, I like Tito. I like Tito, so I was happy for him. I have to say. <laughs> and, uh, and our Bob Sapp and I cool after I broke his thumb. D's nuts. Twelve eleven. Yes, we are. If people haven't seen that, something to look for on my channel where uh, Bob Sapp and I get into a thumb wrestling contest and I break his big big fingers because I'm gangster. Have I played Angry Birds Space, Steve? KT, no, I haven't. I thought about getting that though. I, not, not, I kind of, honestly, I kind of suck at Angry Birds. Uh, my daughter is very good at it though, so I was gonna get it for her. <laughs> I'm not very good at Angry Birds, so. But I heard the Angry Birds in space sold like a gajillion downloads in one day, so. Um, if I could head kick one celeb, who would it be? <laughs> 709 Newfie. If I could head kick one celeb. <sighs> Who just drives me up the wall? I don't. I don't. Who do you think I would hit? Uh huh. Oh nah. I I don't know. But I uh, I can't answer that question. I can't answer that question. Right now, I'd probably head kick a politician or two. Um, uh, you know the celebrities are. You know, you take them with a grain of salt. I'm, I don't know. I can't head kick a celebrity. That pride rules on a girl. What what? Wait, wait's trying to Ray's trying to get me to say something incriminating here. I can't I can't say anything bad. So um <laughs> oh, stop, 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 stop. Um, let's see. 
What's my favorite discipline of martial arts to watch? Not saying MMA, S White Six. My favorite discipline, straight up. Um. You know, I was raised on boxing. I do love boxing. I do love watching a good stand up fight. But. When the Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> When the Jiu Jitsu is good, if you guys, anybody, what, how hilarious was that watching the, the, the UFC, uh, the tough show from, from Brazil? was all the Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu. I like the Jiu Jitsu. I do. Um, but I do, I do love the striking. I have to be honest. You know, um, watching, I, that's why I, I can watch K1 and stuff like that. I, I mean, if you see somebody take a nice, sweet kick to the head, nothing better than that. So, uh, what, what is it? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wade's getting a little silly. I think he hit the bottle while we were he's pumping into stuff. Um, uh, I do. I am a striking fan for sure. But but you know I I've seen some incredible jujitsu and 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 you know firsthand I've sat there and watched Fabrizio over Doom you know over at his gym and when you see somebody who's that good at something it's so enjoyable. It's just it's just fantastic. So I do I do enjoy the jujitsu. I do. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, let's see, let's see. Do I need, do we need some new ones? Um, um, oh, <laughs> this guy's saying he has files in MAV TV or whatever, costs extra money, but has lame programming except for our show, <laughs> X Toxic Avenger X. Well, you know, we may be moving on from there, so you could let it go, maybe. Don't renew. <laughs> Making new deals. Um, so, so yes. Um, um, da, 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 da. Please read this, Rocky Diesel Gypsy. I'm one of Fedor's biggest fans. Do you honestly think we'll ever see him in the UFC? Please read. Oh. I mean, Overeem has l l more losses than Fedor. Who do you think is in the wrong, UFC or M1? I just don't think at this point in his career we would necessarily see Fedor there. I think had it been a couple of years ago, yeah. I don't, I don't think so. That's just me. Fedor's awesome, though. But I don't think it's going to happen, personally. Um, he's a pioneer. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's amazing. He's amazing. I had goosebumps when, when, when we were at the fight with Fabrizio. I mean, it was unbelievable. And I was at uh, one of the Affliction shows that Fedor, Fedor uh, fought to. I mean, I listen. I tell you what fight we wish we had was Fedor Barnett. I wish that fight had happened, and it never did get to. But, um, but that would have been incredible. I, I think Fedor is awesome. I just don't necessarily think he's going to be in the UFC. Um... Ninja Scorpio, can I explain to you me why the judges don't like Frankie Rocky Edgar? He's a champion with the biggest heart of the UFC. I don't, I, you know, why do you think the judges don't like Frankie? I don't think it's that they don't like Frankie. I mean, you could say that about almost any fighter who you believe has lost a controversial decision or something like that. I think Frankie is tremendous and obviously yes has has great heart and that UFC promo that they shot with him as Rocky was phenomenal I I, I can't answer that question I can't answer why a judge doesn't like him and I don't you know I think Ben won that last fight so I'm not one of those people that thinks that Frankie got robbed because I thought Ben won but um, 709 Newfie why can't I answer any of your questions well, I just did. <laughs> what are your other questions? Let's see, let's see. We had to refresh here. Um, let's see, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. I should be the new host of ESPN MMA Live. The show is boring without John Anik. Thank you, Decca MMM. Why don't you go ahead and write to ESPN? <laughs> Honestly, to be, I haven't seen it as much without John. John is great. I haven't seen it as much. Um... All right. Well, I'm glad you guys are still uh, uh, loving this. What do I think of John Fitch? John Fitch got caught. You know, that's what I think of John Fitch. I like him. Nice guy. You know, I know he gets a lot of complaints for being boring or whatever. We had a nice talk with him last time we were in San Jose, and you guys can see that on the channel. And he, you know, he's a he's a good guy. He's a cool guy, and very very knowledgeable about nutrition. My goodness. But um, I think he got caught. Hendricks caught him. It can happen to anybody. I felt bad for his wife. His wife was pregnant at the time, and um, I thought that was hard to take for her, I'm sure. You know, it's a setback, certainly, for John, but he's a pro. I, I think he'll learn from it. I mean, the thing about it, you know, what do you learn? It's it's seven seconds into a fight. I mean, obviously, you need to keep your hands up, but um, 
I, 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 I don't think John, I, you know, it happens. People get caught. Speaking of keeping your hands up, <laughs> I want to talk about something on, on The Ultimate Fighter. I wanted to put a sign up that just said, chin down. If you were playing a drinking game, and if you have it recorded, and I am by no means uh, suggesting that you should drink uh, more than, 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 I was going to say more than necessary, <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> but um, if you're watching The Ultimate Fighter the other day, and it gets to the, you know, it gets to the fight, if you... If you counted how many times, pour your eyes in, chin down, chin down, chin down, chin down. And of course, it didn't happen and this guy got popped um, by Justin. I mean, that fight was that fight was fun, but I was dying because he said, chin down, chin down. I mean, that's all he said. And, and, and Cristiano wasn't listening. And my goodness, if he had kept his chin down, it might have helped him some. But my, I mean, seriously, if you guys have that one on the DVR... Maybe don't don't drink because you'll be smashed within like the first twenty five seconds of the of the round. But maybe just ring a bell just for just for humor. Um, chin down was the I, I really seriously wanted to get yeah. shirts printed that said chin down. Oh, tacos or watermelons, my good friend Montanez. Wonder bread. You know, you know, right? It's all about. I love a good spicy taco, followed up with watermelon. It's all about tacos and watermelons. I have to say, folks, it's a little bit of an inside joke. But uh, when we're hanging out with our buddy Eric Fontanez, the Eric Fontanez, formerly of MMA Weekly, he's the taco on the watermelon and Wade is the Wonder Bread. And that's our little racist stereotypical group. <laughs> as long as we're saying it about ourselves, it's okay. If you say it about me, you will get blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Do I ever wish I would have competed in women's MMA NP wannabe? No. Um, I used to train Taekwondo and when I would come to the sparring and stuff to, to get my belts, uh, I didn't have a good time with it. You know, I, I'm, I'm not great at keeping my anger in check. So if someone's like tagging me upside the head and stuff, I'm going to get mad and I'm probably going to lose my technique and just go a little spastic. Um, I, I actually, in my time was, a, was a good athlete. I played you know, baseball, uh, which eventually softball and soccer and basketball. I was quite good, but but the fighting, I love it. I'm such a fan, but I don't I don't want to get punched. I just don't. Ask Chad George, although I'm a big talker in the gym. I talk a good game, and Eric Fontenay from MMA Weekly. I will fight him formerly. because yes, formerly in MMA, but because my cardio I know will be better. So I can just stick and move, stick and move, stick and move, and he'll never catch me. Would I let my husband compete in MMA if I wanted to? Tog, tog, tog for you? Good question. Absolutely. And that's part of the, uh, he actually has competed. He, he did a smoker. Um, he's competed in, you know, tournaments before, but those were point tournaments and stuff for, for like not enough time to train, kickboxing really. tournaments and stuff. Here's the thing. I actually bought him for our wedding present. I bought him a membership to a full contact gym because I wanted him to get, get into MMA and do all that. Um, had he just been a little bit younger, he probably could, would have done it more full time. You know, obviously we're around it and he gets to train with some great guys when he wants to, but, uh, going full time. No, not, not for, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he trains four times a week, though, bro. <laughs> um, but uh, full contact, four times a week, bro. Uh, but yeah, by all means, if he wanted to, go for it. I'm one of those people that would be the screaming wife, um, yelling at him to kick more and do all this, because I actually know what he's good at skill-wise. Um, and when he did that smoker, what he wasn't doing, so it was bumming me out, so I was screaming like crazy. But uh, but yeah, so let's see. <laughs> That Libra, you are killing me. Do I like Jamaican beef patties? What kind of ridiculous question is that? I'm half Jamaican, of course. I eat the beef patties. Like, I almost stopped by and got some uh, earlier today. I love the beef patties. I love I love ackee and saltfish. I love my Johnny cakes. I love my Callaloo. I mean, come on, come on. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, UFC should hire me as a personality. <laughs> Um, the other guy, and I, I'm kidding, Ariel, you're saying Ariel and, and, and me are your favorites, but you're way easier to look at, and your relaxed approach with the fighters brings out the best interviews. Well, thank you, K2O Juice. All I will say on that is that I was on the Fox lot today. I, uh, I... <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, April will be a good month. Let's just leave it at that. Thank you for the, thank you for the, thank you for the compliment.
bring back pride. Wild Dad, how awesome would that be, huh? Dang. Dang, bring that back. That would be good. Have I ever tried commentating? Uh, Pyramid Song 420. Um, I've not sat there specifically and called a fight um, while I'm mic'd. I do it at my house all the time. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to be working this weekend at the WMMA show, and I'll be doing all the interviews and, and all that good stuff. But um, the straight-up commentating, calling a fight, I've not done it. I would love to give it a go. You know, I certainly would. I, you know, and honestly, I think the best commentators, uh, it depends, you know, you you need – the, the, the color person there to, you know, really fill in the blanks. But one thing that I did learn from, from Steve Albert and, and uh, Al Bernstein when I worked at MMA at, uh, at Showtime Championship Boxing, you know, the best commentators are the ones who know when to ask the right question and how to comment on the action without necessarily giving their opinion on it. So much of MMA, you know, commentary and blogging and quote-unquote journalism is opinion-based and I do believe that to do the job right as a commentator, state the facts, you know, and maybe you think, okay, maybe it looks like, hey, he's trying to set something up, but don't state it as fact and maybe rely on the fighter, the, the, the color commentator to, to pick that kind of thing up. Um, so if I do ever do that, that will be my philosophy going into it. So um, if I could be an MMA fighter... What would be my nickname? Well, it would have to be Brown Sugar, probably. Um, the mouth. <laughs> yeah, motor mouth, Brown Sugar. These are called no, my mouth. No, no motor yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's different. Motor mouth is different. It just means you talk a lot. That's what I was in, in uh, high school. Or they also used to call me Kareem because I played basketball and stuff. But, um, you know, uh, brown, brown Sugar would just be, that just sounds hot. So I would go with that. Um, Soprano, 19, watching some CNN clips of me. Cool. Thank you. That was a fun gig. Um, thank you. Thank you, folks. There's some other stuff about some other people. You know, I'm not a hater, so I'm not going to rag on some of these comments. Mind you, are funny. <laughs> but, but I'm not. I'm your favorite milk. Milf. Milk. <laughs> milk. <laughs> and I haven't even had anything to drink. It's just funny reading those. I'm your favorite milk. Well, thanks. I guess. Okay, listen. Rocky Diesel Gypsy, you've asked a few questions, but I'm going to take this one, too. Don't I think GSP is boring? No. Uh, he lies on people for five rounds. Uh, if Diaz fights again, I feel he can take GSP, but with that said, GSP will maul Condit in another boring fight. What's my thoughts? I don't think GSP is boring. I think he has a style. I mean, sure, would I like to see him knock a few people out or sub him? Absolutely. But I, I don't think what he did to Koscheck was boring. Um, I, and, and personally, as a, as a person just outside the cage, I don't think he's boring. I, I like the guy. And actually, he's one of those people, the more you know, the more I want to get to know. Um, but uh, I do want to see Diaz fight him, that's for sure. How long are we going to go? It's almost yeah, an hour already. Yeah, questions. yeah, we might have to just wrap this up. Cause, and then mention the, Yeah, we'll do it for an hour. And then we'll do it. Yes, okay, so we'll do this for an hour. Um, so two more minutes. Okay, GoPre518, you commented on a maybe video that I was talking too loud with Mike Pierce, and you're sorry. Yeah, because you know why? Sometimes we're in a scrum, and we can't control the mics, and they were kind of far away from us. So you have to turn the mic up kind of loud because they're standing far away. Then when you turn it to you, well, duh, you're going to be louder. But we don't have a mixing guy to work in the audio. So, um, Not if you want it so, fast. So it is what it is. Exactly. You can get it good or you can get it fast. And a lot of time we feel like we do both. But in the scrum situations, you take what you can get. Uh, so we always try to get the one-on-ones. But sometimes, based on the timing behind the scenes at a show, we can't always get one-on-ones. And uh, But we, you know, we definitely do the best we can. And we have some good stuff coming up. Again, this week we're going to have more with Kenny Johnson from uh, Sons of Anarchy. We put out a little arm wrestling video, which is a lot of fun. He, he, I know it has nothing to do with MMA, so all you complainers, whatever. He's a huge MMA fan, and he's a champion arm wrestler, so we put that out just for fun. And we are going to have another clip with him where he's talking about why he loves MMA so much, and we actually took him up to Fortune Gym and trained some boxing with him. So that is going to be coming out. And as promised, as mentioned last time, our Hammer DVD giveaway and T-shirts and sign posters, that is definitely coming too. Uh, like I said, I want to remind you that every Monday now, we're going to be doing new episodes of MMA Heat from our, well, new. Okay. 
we're releasing ep episodes of MMA Heat. So we've got a premiere out right now. You can look for it on my channel. Next week will be episode two. We're also going to be doing these live chats every Monday. Right now it's been 8.30. We are toying with the idea of during the daytime. But if you subscribe to uh, Karen Bryant and MMA Heat on YouTube, you won't miss any updates. You can also, you know, fan us on Facebook, MMA Heat. You can subscribe to me on my Facebook fan page, or I mean on my Facebook page. And I will say this about the Facebook page, because I get a lot of friend requests. And I usually like to interact, you know, I definitely interact with people on my Facebook page. But I have to say that my friends are people that I sort of kind of know. So um, it'd be great if you could join us on the MMA Heat fan page. Or if you subscribe, by all means, you know, comment and everything. And I love to talk to you guys. But I do kind of keep my Facebook page for people that I sort of kind of know. So I hope that doesn't bum people out too much. But uh, have I tried the Taco Bell Dorito Supreme Taco? No. Wade probably has. No, I, I don't that. I don't eat the Taco Bell. I don't run for the border because you run for the bathroom. If I'm going to eat fast food, I go in and out. Um, it's good stuff. Wink, wink. Okay, so I guess that would be it. Uh, anything else we need to, um, to talk about? Let's see. Um, let's see, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see, hmm, yeah, some of these things we've, we've talked about before, and remember, if, if you only got in here a little bit late, this is going to be saved, so you can go back and watch what you may have missed, and, um, Chong Bong, thank you for the love, I'm glad you got to join us, and, um, we're going to wrap it up, uh, in just a minute here, but, thank you, and we'll see you next Monday.